Good morning. Today you're going to learn all about how flowers can be used to tell stories and to send messages to loved ones. I am going to show you a few symbols that you can find here at the Washington County Museum of Fine Arts uh, that show how artists use flowers and many other objects to symbolize our character traits and to send messages to the viewer. Right now I'm standing in the Joshua Johnson exhibition and Johnson used all kinds of symbols in his work, roses, coral, strawberries, moths and butterflies. And I thought it was very, um, it was just a good time to show off our uh, painting here right behind me. Since we are celebrating Mother's Day, uh, we're gonna take a look at Susanna Amasio and Mary Elizabeth Yeo. And this was painted in around 1808, 1809. And I wanted to draw your attention to something we see here in the painting. We have, um, we have Mary uh, has her arm around her daughter, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is holding something in her hand. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And as you look very closely, we see that she is holding some pink roses. She's got five pink roses there. And they are an expression of devotion to, the mom, to her mom. And they're a symbol of graciousness and innocence. So when we see those pink roses, we can think about um, they're a symbol for being uh, innocent. They can be a symbol for being devoted to somebody. And since of course she is with her mother, we assume that um, that is an expression of devotion to her mother. So as we walk around the room here, and I will take you around here in a moment, we're going to take a look at another interesting symbol. It might not be flowers, but it's something fun to kind of look at here. Um, it has some history to it. And when we think about the way that children in this time, uh, their lives are somewhat fragile, uh, we can look at things in a different light, understanding that. We see this young girl in a garden. She's in kind of a natural wild setting, uh, which is different than a lot of these more formal settings, but it's called In the Garden uh, from 1805. And we see that she's pointing to something with her right hand. We see she's pointing to this little moth. And this moth can represent metamorphosis. It can uh, represent a change. It can re represent um, a passing of time. So often uh, Joshua Johnson in his paintings paints children to look as though uh, to, to have things in their arms, a symbol of innocence, but also a symbol of fragility because um, during that time, children didn't live as long and he had five children of his own. So you could tell it was probably on his mind, something that um, parents would worry about. And as we look around at many of these children, we can see that and we can see the way that they are with their family members um, gives you a little insight uh, as to their relationship with other family members. So we see this young boy with his father and uh, his hands in, in his father's hand. And this is portrait of Benjamin Franklin Yeo and son Benjamin Franklin Yeo, 1809. So come on down to the Washington County Museum of Fine Arts and see these portraits for yourself and see if you can find, figure out some of the symbolism or uh, what some of the objects represents. Have a great day and I hope you enjoy Suki Rankin's uh, presentation on creating flowers with meaning and the language, the secret language of flowers. Hello, I'm Suki Rankin and we're going to learn how to make some paper flowers today. And each of you have a kit and when you're finished, this is what you will have. And each flower has a special meaning that you can share with somebody you really care about. It could be mom, grandma, or a very special friend. So let's get started. First thing you're gonna need in your kit, your little flower sign tells you that you're gonna need scissors. So whatever pair of scissors you're comfortable with and some glue. So it can either be some tacky glue or Elmer's glue, or it can be a glue stick, whichever you're comfortable with. A lot of times I like to use the white glue and I always pour just a little bit out on a paper or a lid 
and then I use a toothpick to put it on. Now let's explore what's inside our bag. Inside this bag is everything you need to make our project. Our paper cone holder is already put together, so it's ready for you to use. And inside there's a piece of Sahara foam, which is used to arrange silk or dried flowers. And we're gonna be poking the flowers in this. Then you have a numbered bag for each project that we're going to do. We have three bags. We're gonna start with bag number one. And in bag number one, you'll see you have a yellow square. In this yellow square, we're gonna make a tulip. And this is our tulip, our yellow tulip. This is what a yellow tulip looks like. Here's one that's not quite open yet, but here's one that's open. And I bet if you look out in your yard, you'll see yellow tulips blooming. So the first thing I want you to do with the yellow tulip is turn the paper so that it's a diamond shape. You want one of the points pointing to your tummy. And then we're gonna take the bottom point and fold it up to the top point. It's gonna look like a triangle. Then we're gonna unfold it. And then we're gonna take the side point and we're gonna fold it up to the top. So you have another triangle, but when you open it up, it sort of looks like the inside of a kite. So you pick one of those lines to fold back on to make a triangle. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the side and we're gonna fold it up pointing to the sky like that. It's sort of like a triangle pointing up into the air. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. When you do origami, which is the art of Japanese paper folding, you usually do whatever you do on one side, you do to the other side. It's pretty symmetrical. Now you have a shape that looks like this. Next, you're gonna take this pointy part on the side and you're gonna fold it in just a little bit. And what you do on one side, you'll do on the other side. And then you can put it down on your table and use your fingernail or your finger to make those creases nice and strong so that they stay flat. So your shape looks like that. Now you're gonna turn it over. There's your tulip. And when you make a yellow tulip, it means the smile of sunshine. So who in your life do you think is sunshine? That's who you wanna give the yellow tulip to. So we're gonna pull out a pipe cleaner out of our bag. The green pipe cleaner. And we're gonna actually take it and push it down and poke it through the paper. Now, if you want to take your scissors and make a little snip, you can do that, which will help you push it through. And I'm going to bend the top of my pipe cleaner so it doesn't go all the way through. So now that has the stem for my tulip. In order to make it sturdier, you can take one of the paper straws in the bag and you can slide it up on your pipe cleaner. So there is your yellow tulip. Okay, the next flower we're gonna make, in your bag, we have another paper straw. We have three purple hearts. And a bright neon, almost like sunburst. What we're gonna make is this flower. And this flower is gonna be our pansy. There are a lot of pansies in people's flower pots right now. Some people call them monkey faces. 
Can you see how they have that little splash in the middle? Pansies always mean they're very loyal and I'm thinking of you. So whoever you feel you are very loyal to, most likely mom or grandma or special sibling maybe, you might wanna give this pansy to. So this is where we're gonna take these three hearts. And you can see in my hearts, I have a hole punched in them. And we're gonna line those hearts up over the holes, just like that. Just to give you an idea. Now, in order for them to stay that way though, we're gonna to have to glue. So this is where I will take my glue. And I will just take a little bit And I'm going to sort of position it on an angle. And then I'll put a little glue to put the third part down. So it looks just like that when we're finished. Now I need to put the sunburst on. So I know it's going to go all the way around that hole. So I can put glue all the way around the hole. And it doesn't matter which way you have the sunburst, whatever way you like. So we have that on there. Now the way we finish this is we're going to take our straw and we're going to push it through the hole. You can push it up as far as you like. And there's your pansy. All right. Let's go on to bag number two. When you open up bag number two, you have two white flower parts, a little yellow pom-pom, and a paper straw again. Next, on this one, we're going to make a daisy. And these are what white daisies look like. Does this daisy look like that? Daisies mean loyalty, loyal love, I'll always be faithful. So who in your life do you feel that flower belongs to? So the way we're going to do this, we're going to take our two flower parts and we're going to position one on top of the other. Now we want to stagger the petals. We don't want them on top of one another because we want to be able to see all the different layers. So you stagger them in between one another. Again, just take a little bit of glue and dab on there and position. Then we're gonna take the straw. Now, if you look at the straw, one end has some cuts in it. So you can separate those pieces in your straw. And what you're going to do is you're going to put glue on each one of those little pieces. And then it's going to go on the back of your daisy. So that's how your daisy is put on the stem. Then we're going to take our yellow pom-pom and that's going to be our center. So again, put a little bit of glue in the center and stick on your pom-pom. And now you have your daisy. Faithful love. How many of you have ever taken a daisy and goes, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me not. I bet you if you ask your mom, she'll tell you she did that when she was a kid. Okay, now we come to bag number three. And what we're going to make in bag number three is a pink carnation. Carnations mean a mother's love. And it also means I'll never forget you. And in 1907, I know that was long before you were ever born. It's long before I was born too. The pink carnation became the official symbol of Mother's Day. So a lot of people on Mother's Day give 
pink carnations to all the moms. So we're gonna make one that you can give to your mom. So in your bag, you have several things. You have a bunch of green pipe cleaners. You have a straw. You have an object that looks like this, almost like a butterfly. And then you have another pink piece. What I've done is put a pink piece of tissue paper in here that you can fold to make this shape. But if you'd rather use the one that's already put together, you can do that. But I'm gonna show you how you can start from the very beginning to make this shape. So what we do is we're gonna take our pink tissue paper. And at one end, you'll see it's already got a nice fold. That's about a one inch fold. And that's about what you want. We're gonna accordion fold all the way down this piece of paper. So what you do, there's four layers of pink tissue in here, all the same size, and we're folding them all together. So I already have one side folded down. Then I flip my paper over and I fold it that I line it up right with that same fold. Then I flip it over and do the other side. That's what you do when you accordion fold. So we're doing that all the way down the end of the paper. Okay, once we get down to the end of the paper, if there's too much sticking out at the end, we can take our scissors and cut that off. Because sometimes it won't line all the way up. So we have our fold. It's all accordion fold. Now I'm going to take a pipe cleaner. I'm going to sort of fold this in half just to get an idea where the middle is and take my pipe cleaner and fold it around and twist it. So it's twisted together like that. Now, these sides, we don't want them flat. We want them a little curved like a flower. So you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut it. It's all right if it's a little pointy. All you're doing is curving off the flat part. Okay, now this is where the flower part begins. Pick one side and spread it apart. There are four layers, so then you're going to gently start pulling up the top layer of tissue. You sort of will pull up the top layer of tissue while you're pulling down gently on the other three layers. So you don't wanna to pull too hard or it might rip. So then you find the next layer and you do the same thing. Gently pull it up while you're sort of tugging on the other bottom layers. Sometimes you might need a little help from mom or some other adult when you're doing this. Okay, and then we do the same thing with the next layer. Can you see the flower starting to emerge? Okay, so there's half of our flower. So now we're gonna go to the other side and spread the paper apart and do the exact same thing. Sometimes it's a little hard to start on the second side. So 
person, you might need somebody just to give you a little bit of help. So we're pulling it up. Remember to gently tug to pull the top layer and then pull the bottom layers down while you're pulling. And by the time you get to the last one, you have all these ruffles. Sometimes it's a little hard to find it. So if you're having trouble, please ask somebody to help you. Okay, then when you're finished, you can pull all your ruffles up together. And sometimes I take my fingers through and just fluff it a little bit. So we have our carnation. Now, We'll take the straw and we're going to poke it up the pipe cleaner. It just makes our stem sturdy. And there's our pink carnation. Now it's time to assemble our flowers into our flower cone. So inside again is that like piece of styrofoam. And whichever flower you want to do first, I'm going to do the carnation. So I'm going to poke the straw into the styrofoam and then I'll take my daisy and this, the pipe cleaner is sticking out on my, um, my pipe cleaner is longer than the straw so I can always cut that off. And I'll stick my tulip in here. And next I have my pansy. Now I want my pansy to be a little shorter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my pansy stem a little shorter. So I'm gonna cut it off so that it's closer to the base here and poke it in. So now you can hang this on a doorknob or, or a chair back. There's your flower cone. And be sure and give it to somebody special in your life because all these flowers mean, I think you're special and I love you. Hope you had a great time making flowers.